Hello guys, welcome to this brand new tutorials on programming in Visual Basic .NET. My name is Evans and I'll be taking you guys right from scratch uh, in programming in Visual Basic .NET. This video in particular is for you guys out there who do not have um, any knowledge, any information whatsoever on programming and um, I really want you to be on the same pace with, with when we begin to uh, program in Visual Basic .NET. So this video really will be taking you guys through what programming is uh, and so on and so forth. All right. So without saying much, let me go into the contents of this uh, video. What I'll be looking at really is to introduce you guys to what a computer is, what a program is, uh, what programming is, and I'll look at what programming languages are out there for you guys to, to program and um, we'll also look at Visual Basic .NET and its uh, IDE. All right, so I'll explain what the IDE is later on, but um, uh, let's get uh, started, right? So what is a computer? I know you are probably thinking in your mind, but well, Evans, what has the definition of a computer got to do with programming? And um, you're probably seated right in front of a computer and uh, you know how to turn on the computer, you know how to uh, switch off the computer, and uh, you know how to use some apps on the computer and so on and so forth. And you wonder, but why should I bother to know about the definition of a computer when it comes to programming? Well, I'll leave that up uh, for you to answer later on when I explain what the definition of a computer is really. And then uh, and I explain also what programming is. And you will see how these two uh, kind of uh, uh, intermarry, so to say. All right. So a computer is... Um, Basically, I define a computer as uh, a device that works under the control of stored programs. Okay, so you see, you notice I've underlined um, the phrase stored programs. And um, yeah, so the, the other thing that you should know about a computer is that um, it accepts input uh, or instructions and uh, it processes them to produce output and or stores the output onto a suitable storage medium. Okay, so you also notice that I've highlighted uh, four important words there, input, process, output, and storage. Okay, these are very, very important uh, uh, words in, in computing or in the definition of a computer. So they say that for, for any device to qualify to be classified as a computer, it must do uh, these uh, processes. It must input, it must process, and must output or it must store something, okay? So the, the, the first three really are prerequisite. They, 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 they are compulsory. Any device that should um, qualify to be a computer should do the first three compulsory. And then the last one is an optional one because some devices may not even store the, uh, the result of processing. All right, so another thing that is important uh, uh, to note here is that a computer cannot do anything without instructions so I've, I've 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 put the word cannot in quotes because you know n n now nowadays we we we, we have um, artificial intelligence and computer really adapting and are able to do and process things on their own and so on but um uh, on a larger or on a broader uh, uh, view computers really cannot do anything unless you give them instructions, okay? So what does this mean to you as the programmer? It means that you are the one who is responsible for creating these instructions so that the computer can execute them, okay? So really programming is about creating these instructions for the computer to really have something to do, okay? So I'll, I'll explain this uh, later on when we come to look at what programming is. All right, so maybe let me just look at this from a different perspective. So using a graphical representation of what a, what, what a computer is, uh, I would say, first of all, we start with the input, okay? So this input can start, I mean, can come from a keyboard, can come from sensor, can come from a mouse, and so on and so forth. We, we, we gather this input and we feed it into the CPU, all right? So in the, se the CPU, which is the central processing unit, it is mainly made up of the processor and... Uh, the main memory, of course, there are registers and other things, but uh, uh, my main focus will really be on the processor and um, the main memory. So when instructions or input come from the keyboard or from the sensor, whatever, it is first of all fed into RAM, okay, into the main memory. Then the CPU releases uh, uh, certain, um, uh, uh, let me say, control signals, uh, which are used to go and fetch instructions from RAM. 
okay so the instructions which came from the input devices or from whatever uh, 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 the, the input source is we pick them up from ram now may i say here that um, the processor cannot work on anything unless it is found in ram okay so the instructions are fed into ram and then instructions are released also to go and pick up the instructions which are in ram and then those instructions are decoded. Now, to decode means to interpret the instructions. What is this instruction about? Is it an addition? Is it a multiplication? Is it maybe a comparison? And so on and so forth, okay? So once the instructions are decoded, that means they're understood by the processor. It knows exactly what it's supposed to do. They need to go ahead and execute uh, that instruction. So once the execution is done, the result of processing is fed onto a screen, okay? Um, an output device such as a screen, yeah. And um, maybe it can be a printer or a buzzer, okay? But something that can display the result of processing, okay? But there are cases also when you need to store the result of processing for future references. So you can store these results onto a hard disk or a flash disk and so on and so forth, okay? So let me just walk you through the diagram once more. We start with input, and I said input can, 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 can consist of instructions, okay? It's many instructions, and these instructions, they can come from a keyboard, they can come from a sensor, they can come from a mouse, etc., etc. And uh, these instructions, they are gathered together, and they are fed into the central processing unit, in particular into RAM, okay? So once the instructions are into RAM, uh, a further instruction is going to be sent, or a control signal is going to be sent to RAM, uh, to, to pick up the instructions that are in RAM or the data that is in RAM. And then this data will need to be decoded. That is, it will need to be interpreted. It will need to be understood. What is this data really all about? And once it is, it is, um, it is, it is, it is interpreted, it is understood in, in the processor, the processor then will go ahead and execute the instruction. Okay? It will carry out the execution of that instruction uh, in, the, in, 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 the, in the processor. And then the results of um, that will be fed into the, 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 the output device or through the output device. In this case, it can be a VDU or a monitor or any screen uh, display. Okay? We can also want the output to be sent through a printer. Uh, maybe if it is, uh, let's say, a payroll system, uh, th the results of processing after you finish processing employee data and so on and so forth. And... Um, you want now the system to produce pay slips, for example. You 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 find that uh, I mean it to at some point begin to print out uh, individual employees um, uh, pay slips. Okay, so it can also be through a buzzer. Maybe it's a it's 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 a program that monitors smoke levels in the room and and so on and so forth. When the smoke level uh, uh, goes uh, to a certain limit or beyond a certain limit, then you want the the computer to send a signal to the buzzer, you know, to 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 to, to begin to beep, maybe so to say. Okay, so then the results of processing, of course, will have to be stored. If you want to have a further or future reference, then you have to store these results onto uh, um, a secondary memory uh, storage device, such as the hard disk or the memory, uh, um, I mean, the flash memory, um, flash disk, rather. Okay, so let's proceed. So now, what is a computer program? Now, Remember, we, when we defined a computer, we said a computer is a device that works under the control of stored programs. And I underlined the phrase stored program. Now, stored program is, 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 is equivalent to a computer program. Okay? So in other words, I want to define now that stored program that I underlined there. What really is a computer program? Okay? So a computer program can be said to be a set of instructions that a computer follows really to perform a particular task, okay? A set of instructions that a computer follows to perform a particular task. Now, remember we said that uh, uh, under input, we said the computer should be able to do input, process, output, and um, I should be able to also to do storage. Now, we said under input, we will mainly deal with instructions there. We collect instructions. And so we are saying that a program is a set of instructions, okay, that a computer follows to perform a particular task, okay? For example, you add two numbers, or we want to add two numbers, say num1 plus num2, okay? And uh, you want to store the result in num3. 
and uh, you want to print the result that is stored in num3. So this can be a set of instructions. The first instruction is add num1 uh, or num1 plus num2, store result in num3, and print num, uh, num3. And that can be an instruction. Let me look at the graphical representation of what I'm trying to talk about here. All right, so you can have under input, you collect num1 and num2. So you can prompt a user to say enter num1, enter num2, and these can really come from the keyboard. Okay, and uh, you pass whatever instruction that you've collected, you pass them onto the processor, okay, the, onto the CPU. So in RAM, you have num1 passed into RAM, num2 passed into, into RAM, and also the operator that you're going to use, which is the plus sign, okay? So you have num1 plus num2, and the result of that, assign it to num3, okay, or store it temporarily in num3, okay? So you, you find the, the, the computer uses a CPU to compute num1 plus num2 and then store the result in num3. Okay, so the result then is output onto the screen. So you print num3 and um, of course it will be displayed onto a screen, the result. And if you want, you can store the result num3 onto a screen or rather onto um, a storage device such as a hard disk and um, a, f a flash disk or, or so on. Okay, so now you know, I want to come back uh, to that question. Why did we have to define a computer? I mean, what has a computer or the definition of a computer really got to do with programming? Okay, so let me just go through once more. I said a computer is a device that um, works under the control of stored programs. It automatically accepts input, processes it, to produce output and store or and or store the output. Now you notice we start with input. It automatically accepts input, okay, which is num1 and num2 in this case, processes it, add num1 plus num2, then output the result, which is num3, output the result of processing, and then and or store it. So you will see that from the definition of a computer, actually, we um, uh, we actually uh, going through the process of programming, so to say, because when we write a program, a program uh, is going to constitute a set of instruction. Okay, we want this instruction to give this instruction to a, com uh, a, a processor, and then when we give the instruction to the processor, the processor is going to process our instructions, which we read, which we wrote in a particular programming language, so to say, and then it is going to feed these uh, uh, instructions into an output uh, device such as a screen and then it's going to store these um, these instructions onto uh, uh, a storage device all right so let's 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 proceed so what then is programming okay so programming is a technique now i use the word technique because i really want you to understand that programming is actually a skill okay it is a skill you can't just come today and just start in hitting keys on the keyboard <laughs> saying that you are programming <laughs> no 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 it is a skill okay so you 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 it is a technique that you build okay so it is the process really of writing computer programs using a suitable programming language now i've highlighted the word programming language we need to define what a programming language is so in this case a programming language i, I would simply say it is a language that is designed to create instructions for a computer Okay, so telling it what to do and how to do it. Okay, so this language, of course, like us in this case, will be using Visual Basic.net. It is specifically uh, uh, tailored uh, uh, to create certain instructions that you want to uh, 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 to give the computer. Okay, so you will have you love to know the language itself. Uh, which is uh, uh, known as the syntax of a language. You love to know the symbols and the, the keywords that are used in this language for you to be able to program and tell the computer exactly what you want it to do. Okay. So there are a lot of programming languages in the world today. And uh, some of these languages include um, Java, uh, PHP, uh, JavaScript, HTML, XML, VB.net, uh, C Sharp, C++, uh, Python, and so on and so forth. All right. So what is a programming environment? All right. So it is very important that uh, we understand the environment where we'll be working and uh, doing our programming. So a programming environment is simply the interface that you use to build, run, and test your program. Okay. It's an interface that you use to build, run, and test your program. 
that's very important okay so any programming language of course is going to have its own interface okay i'll explain that later on so it is usually called an ide which is an integrated development environment remember i talked about the ide uh, on um, on the context so this is really an environment that is going to help you do your programming uh, properly uh, so you find it is going to provide uh, things like um, buttons things like menus and um, things like icons okay so for you to be able to really use your 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 your, your programming language uh, effectively now some ides of course they don't have those features and you just go strictly uh, uh, into coding you don't have menus you don't have icons you don't have buttons and so on and so forth but a number of uh, ides that are coming up today they have that feature where you guys are going to to use uh, features like menus icons and pointers or buttons okay so the IDE that we'll be using in this uh, in this um, tutorial is Visual Basic, uh, rather Visual Studio, and uh, the language that we're going to be using is Visual Basic.net. So in the next tutorial, I'll be showing you how to set up uh, uh, Visual Studio uh, for for programming in Visual Basic.net. Of course, there will be need to download uh, Visual Studio and uh, set up uh, Visual Basic on that. Now, I love to set up Visual Studio because it not only comes with the platform for you to program in Visual Basic.net, but uh, it also comes uh, with a platform for you to program in things like uh, uh, C Sharp, uh, Visual C, -Sharp, uh, C++, and so on and so forth, and other languages, J Sharp and uh, F Sharp and, and so on. So not only will you have the platform to program in Visual Basic.net, but in case you want to expand and uh, program in other languages as well, uh, that you, you can uh, still go ahead. So you can also, if you want, download just specifically, you know, uh, maybe uh, Visual Basic Express or so on, it will just be tailored for Visual uh, Basic.net, no other language at so whatsoever. But it, it, it's, it's good if you have the opportunity to download just the whole Visual Studio package. It's, it's, it's really free and uh, you don't have to pay anything. So you can just go ahead and download the entire Visual Studio package. It's a little big uh, application, but um, uh, it's worth it downloading because you have uh, many other languages that you would want to learn and uh, be able to program in. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it has been informative for you. And I, and I, and I hope to see you in the next video where we're going to really begin the setting up of Visual Basic uh, uh, or Visual Studio and uh, really configuring it to program and be able to program in Visual Basic.net. So see you in the next video and um, have a wonderful, wonderful day.